we want to tackle a very sensitive subject. And that's families and holiday time. Welcome to the channel. I'm Liz. And I'm Paul. And these are exciting times to push past fear, build confidence, and live amazing. And it's holiday time, and you may not be feeling all that amazing. And that's okay. And Paul and I are taking on a pretty difficult subject today because we know that there are lots of people out there where holidays are a difficult time. One out of every three people don't even talk to family. So holiday has those kind of challenges of there be at least one person, right? So how does it, 27% of people. Yeah, I looked up the statistic uh, and 27% um, of people are estranged from at least one family member. And I think that number is higher, quite frankly, because everybody we know has somebody that that in their family that they don't that they don't communicate with. Yeah, and either and whether it's their decision or the other person's decision or a mutual decision, and that can make it hard for the holidays. And I want to share a realization that I had about a year ago that really brought me a lot of peace and liberation and maybe it will bring that to you to kind of help you get through this difficult time and i want to illustrate that by telling a story can i tell a story sure <laughs> go for it yeah by the way we're in our we're in our well i'm in my holiday clothes and i've got the tree up and <laughs> i guess this is as close as i'm gonna get it's almost red yeah yeah paul and i have been on the road three years as full-time rvers but Two it, years together. Two years together. So my first year I was solo and so was he. And at my first Christmas, I bought a Christmas dress. And if you see the wrinkles, you're not imagining things. It's a little wrinkle. That's just part of life on the road. We don't have an iron and that's okay. But the story I want to share illustrates this shift that I had in thinking about family. So in my first year on the road, when I started out, I had a camper van and I'm up in Lexington. I traded my van in, I sold my van and got a fifth wheel. And a friend of mine said, well, you can stay in my driveway while you get everything set up. So the first thing she does is I go over there and she's cutting branches off of her that overhang her driveway so I can park. And then she says, hey, you can come in or out of my house anytime. Here's a key, you can do laundry, you can shower here, just whatever you want. And I almost started crying right then and there because that is family. So Patty, if you are watching, you are my family. You showed so much love and so much welcoming wherever your family is. If you cannot be with them or if you don't want to be with them, that's okay too. Family is what you make them and really see yourself as someone who is open to whoever comes into your life to allowing them to be your family. I mean, that's certainly what we've mm -hmm. done. Yeah, I remember <laughs> I had a great aunt. She used to tell me, you know, Paul, you can, you can pick your friends, but you can't pick your family. And, and that, I think about that statement quite often is it because you know we all well not we all but some of us have problems with with family members we don't get along for whatever reason and and uh or they're not good for us maybe yeah, they're, they're maybe they're toxic or they unhealthy are. or hurtful or right. abusive if you don't know we had an accident with our uh camper earlier this year and that's when you said you know jill and darren would have let us stay with them. We've had other people offer to give us their camper. We could stay in their camper while ours was being Yeah, fixed. people that we've never even met reached out to us um, through the channel and said, hey, I've got this trailer, or I think one was a, a trailer and one was a, one was a class A. And they said, you know, you're welcome to use it while you were waiting for your rig to get repaired. This channel and, and meeting you guys out there has just changed the way I look at the world. I, I, I've always been kind of a negative person and don't always see the silver lining. This channel and, and you people have changed that for me. I'm much more open to strangers now than I ever was before. And that's big. That's big for me. Yeah, it is huge. That's really big. And, and I want to say, you know, if you've won the family lottery and you have a warm and loving family, 
I think that's awesome. I'm sure you know someone in your life who has not. If you can invite them to your table or reach out and just wish them a happy holidays, that will mean so much because not all of us have won that lottery. Yeah, I mean, it can be tough out there. It's, uh, you know, I've gone through some tough times myself with the divorce and, you know, for those of you who wonder how I ended up out here on the road, I mean, that's the the core of it was, was a divorce and uh, a me too. A major life change, and and uh, and I was looking for. I was looking to turn my life around. What I had been doing up to that point was obviously not working that well. I mean, it's it's just odd the way things happen in your life. But RV life can be isolating, you know. Oh yeah. Talk about your first Christmas. How oh, that was like. Oh, I don't even want to relive it. It was it was really difficult. I was in California, where I'm from. I was in an RV park in San Diego, pouring rain. I, I couldn't leave my, my trailer. I had a relatively small trailer because I really wasn't even sure that this life was going to be for me, so I didn't invest a lot. I just bought really the first trailer I looked at. Couldn't drive anywhere because the road leading into the campground was flooded. Yeah, it was, it was a very bad time in my life. I think it's really important to note, you know, since we both have been solo for a year, if you are solo, start planning now to be around people, just loved ones, people that greet you warmly um, and, and reach out in your campground. My first year could have really been bad, too. Um, I was fortunate to be in a campground that had a strong sense of community, so we had a potluck. Two neighboring campers uh, took me to go see one of their family and spend Christmas with them. I think it's so important not to isolate over the holidays, you know, to do what makes you feel connected to others. You need to stay connected to, to fellow human beings. I mean, we're not meant to be alone. At least I'm not, I, and I don't think you are. I just, I think we're better in pairs. <laughs> so, in pairs or groups or whatever. Yeah. And, and just keep in mind, and I don't want to get too heavy here, and I'm going to anyway, but suicide rate goes, goes up, so, uh, I, I don't know how much, but it goes up in the holidays. And, and so just be aware, there are people out there on the, on the ragged edge of, you know, they, they're holding on for all they're worth. And uh, so a kind word, a smile uh, could go a long way. You don't know. I mean, I read a story about somebody who wrote in her journal that if somebody at least would say hello to her today, she would not take her life. She would not kill herself. Well, they found the journal, but it was too late. So nobody said hello to her. But conversely, I heard about somebody who was going to jump off the Golden Gate Bridge and someone said hello to him and talked to him and acknowledged him and that was enough to change his mind. I, I do remember, I, I don't even like going back to this time, but when I was in that Christmas period that I was talking about, I was staying sane by going on bike rides and there was this, this ride where I would go 10 miles out to a Starbucks and, and have coffee. And I remember going there and I was just, sitting out front I hadn't got my coffee yet and and some fella came by and he must have seen something in my demeanor and he just stopped and chatted um, didn't get his name didn't don't I mean it was just a quick conversation but but man it it changed it changed my day and and really it, yeah, it just it just changed my day. I, I was in a very dark place at that point in my life, and and uh, and uh, like I said, he must have seen something in my demeanor. I must have <laughs> I must have looked really sad, and uh, he just stopped and chatted with me about about nothing really. I mean, just you know, how you doing? And you know, you out for a bike ride? You never know how much you impact others, just a quick hello or having a conversation. Mm -hmm. And this year we are gonna be just us for the holidays. Yeah. But we don't feel alone because we have you. We so appreciate you reaching out on, and we so appreciate the comments. If you are feeling alone, 
Honestly, the best cure is to reach out to someone else and that will help you feel less alone. Reach out to us, leave us a comment, and uh, we would love to hear from you. Yeah. One of the A-Team members reached out to me when I was, um, I forget which video it was, but, but something kind of heavy, and, and he reached out. His name is Don, and he's a veteran like myself, and he gave me his personal phone number. I haven't called him yet. I probably am going to here during the, the holiday season just to say hello. Not, I'm, I'm not really going through any tough times right now, but, but uh, um, just to say hello and thank him for, for reaching out. And uh, so just if you can do that for somebody, I mean, if, if, if you see somebody that, that looks like they might be in crisis and, you know, like I said, just a smile and a hello and, and uh, you know, a, a quick conversation. If, God forbid, you are on the verge of, of hurting yourself, um, there are suicide prevention lines that you can call. Please, please do that if, if you're if you're even if you're even thinking it, you know, just just call them.